We are totally gonna MacGyver the... Th does anybody under the age of 30 even know who MacGyver is? Man, I'm old. It's okay, I'm still hip. I'm still jiggy. So the other day I had a thought that microphones are a lot like camera lenses, right? You might have a lens for everyday shooting. Maybe you've got a different lens that you use for shooting landscapes, wide angle lens like that. Maybe you've got a small, fast and discreet lens that you use for street photography. Maybe you occasionally have to bring out the really big guns if you wanna shoot some sort of sports event or portrait or wedding or some other type of event where you need something properly fast and has some reach. There are other times where you need a macro lens like this. This is the lens that I use to capture all of the close-up shots on this channel. In fact, the lens on this camera right now is a wide angle lens that I use to capture everything on the desk. And maybe there's times where I use a standard lens with image stabilization built in so that I can walk around and shoot without having to worry about motion blur. So each one of these lenses lets me do something that I wouldn't otherwise be able to do. And it's the same thing with microphones. Check this out. So here we have my large diaphragm condenser mic that I use to capture vocals. Sometimes when I'm not using this, I'll use some other large diaphragm condensers, like one of these. This one happens to be a tube mic, so it gives me that nice tubey warm sound. And in some cases where I don't want a condenser mic, I'll pull up 58s, the Shure SM58. You get two of these on a snare drum top and bottom, or you put one of these in front of a guitar cabinet. It's an instant rock sound. Very cheap, very simple, gets the job done every time. In some cases, you don't need a large diaphragm condenser or a dynamic, you need a small diaphragm condenser. I've got a pair of these, I use them in stereo, and they're usually in some sort of overhead configuration like this, so I can capture drum overheads, room, or other things when I'm recording stuff like that. There are other times where you need a specialized microphone like this. This is a measurement mic. It is very flat and I use it to tune my studio. And I don't use this very often. It's a stereo mic. It's got two capsules inside. And it lets me capture things in stereo without having to set up two separate microphones and get them aligned and everything. And of course, what studio would be complete without that mic? Now this happens to be that mic for me. It's a Neumann TLM 103. It's the cheap, Neumann, and I think this thing just sounds phenomenal. It's, it's not a 67, it's not an 87, but it gives me that sound, and it sounds great on almost everything. So, very happy to have this, very happy to use this. Now, all of these microphones, these are wonderful mics, and they all produce a high fidelity recording. Even the dynamics can sound really good if you treat them properly. But, Sometimes you don't need a hi-fi sound. You're, you're actually looking for a low-fi sound. Let's say you're working on a track or you're working on a film something and you actually want something to sound low-fi, something to sound not great. And you could, of course, record it with one of these and then spend an eternity with plugins and filters and stuff trying to make it sound bad. Or you could do something a little more fun, a little more experimental and actually build your own microphone. I'm willing to bet that most of you, probably all of you, have not seen anything like this before. But uh, we're going to construct our own mic from scratch. And it's not going to sound very good, I have to warn you. But it's going to be an interesting sound. I think you're going to get a kick out of this. So, I'm excited. Let's go build one. Alright, alright. So to build this thing, here's what you're going to need. This is called wire wrapping wire. It's basically really thin insulated wire. I got this whole thing. It's 250 meters of wire for like seven dollars. It costs practically nothing. Get the thinnest one that you can get. This one happens to be AWG 30 or 30 gauge, which means the wire is really thin. You want this because we're building a magnet and we want it to be thin. The next thing that you need is a used up spool of solder. So when you buy solder, it looks like this. And when you use it up, you have this spool left over. I hold on to these things because they're nice. You can wrap things around them and build magnets and other things like that. If you don't have something like this, you might be able to use just a roll of toilet paper. Save this and then you can wrap the thing around it and you should be good to go. 
Beyond that, you need the usual things like wire cutters, soldering iron, and a little bit of electrician's tape to hold it all together. But these are very basic tools. Oh, and the critical ingredient is magnets. How do they work? Magnets are fun. If you're an inventor, you probably should have a, a small box of magnets like this. I got this off of the internet. It is a bunch of neodymium magnets. They are surprisingly stupidly strong and really fun to play with. And um, you're gonna need some of these so that you can make this mechanism work. So we're building a magnet here. A dynamic microphone is basically a magnet. It's the same as a speaker. Take your spool. They almost always have holes on the inside of the spool. If it doesn't, just drill a small hole in there and make sure to do this. Don't miss this step, otherwise you're gonna be having to unspool everything and do it again. Take your wire and run it through one of the holes. Like this. And give yourself plenty of slack, so maybe this much slack. Now as you're doing this, make sure that you're getting nice, clean, parallel lines and you're not doing a sloppy job. What you want to avoid is air gaps and crisscrosses and too much stuff. You want nice clean parallel lines and you need to get maybe four or five layers of wire wrapped on top of itself. There's no sort of science to this. Well, I'm sure there's a science to this, but the way we're doing it, we're just sort of winging it. I can't give you an exact number of winds or exact length of wire that you need to use because your coil is going to be different, your, the material of your wire might be different than what I have, this diameter might be different, the strength of the magnets might be different than what you have to work with. So you have to sort of play this by ear and experiment a little bit until you find something that works. Start wrapping and get about four or five layers of this wire wrapped on top of itself. So I wanted to give a quick shout out to my brother, the electrical engineer. He was telling me that years ago he was asked to speak to a bunch of elementary school children about what engineers do. And instead of going there and talking their ears off, he actually showed up with a bunch of experiments, including a variation of this one. And the kids loved it. They loved getting their hands on it, playing with stuff, learning things. And I'm hoping at least some of them went into science and engineering fields. Anyway, when I heard that story, I thought, you know what? People watching this channel, they're not elementary school kids probably, but I think they're gonna get a kick out of it as well, which is why we're filming it today. Okay, so now we've got about five layers wrapped. And if you take a close look here, you will see that the layers are nice and tightly packed. It's not perfect. I fibbed it up a little bit on the edges here, but it's pretty good. This is what you want. You want nice, clean, parallel and tightly packed. The tighter you pack it, the more efficient the magnet is. So try to do this as best you can. I've got about five layers on this now, and I know from experience is going to work pretty well. So what I'm going to do is cut this. Once you've done all of this work, this took me about 20 minutes to wrap all this. You don't want this unraveling and becoming a nightmare. So get some uh, electrician's tape like this. And we have ourselves a magnet. Strip the ends. All right, so we got two stripped ends. Next up, we take a cable, a regular tip sleeve cable, like an instrument cable, except I've clipped off the other end and tinned the leads like so. And what we're gonna do is take this magnet and wire it to these leads. And there we go. So now we've got this wired up. Now put a little bit of electrician's tape around these leads to make sure that they don't touch and cause shorts. All right, so wrap wire, magnet, cable. Okay, what I have here is some nylon cord. We happen to have this around the house, so I'm using it. You'll notice there's a theme on this build in that I'm just using whatever's available. This is not a scientific anything. So I'm gonna cut myself a length of this, say about this much, and put this away. Now this is where the magnets come in. I've selected two of them. What I like about this one is that it's got a hole in it, so it makes it easy to thread the wire through and then thread it around one more time and you end up with a nice captive magnet like that. And this other one, I'm just gonna sort of stick it on there 
kind of willy-nilly. It's actually working better, I found, when it's not perfectly balanced. Don't worry too much about the orientation or how this is set. I, it'll work no matter how you do it. And what you need next is a paper cup. Any kind of paper cup will do. Plastic cups will probably also work. I've tried this with a can of olives and it worked perfectly well too. So what you need to do is take a toothpick and put a hole in the middle of that cup. And use that same toothpick to jam the end of this through the hole. All right, so get that all up in there. Pull it through. Now tie a knot on this side. And go ahead and stick that toothpick in there. So now we got a toothpick and clip this end of the toothpick. Now we've got a wire. And it's gonna be held taut against the back of the cup and magnet here. Now I've made a little base out of a cup. I just cut the back of it off so that this thing will fit on top of it like so. So you'll notice that I have turned off the studio lights above because they are fluorescent lights and this picks up all kinds of noises from electrical sources like that. We've got the magnet here and I got my recorder right here, the trusty Zoom H6. I'm gonna take the output of that magnet and connect it to channel one. Now, like I said, this is not going to be a hi-fi recording just to set expectations here, but uh, here we go. Fire up the recorder. And as soon as these magnets get inside the magnetic field of this, we'll be recording it here. Let's see if this works, shall we? Hello, 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 hello. We can see that the levels are going up and down on the meters. And as I talk into the cup, you can hopefully make out what I'm actually saying using the uh, recorder's output. And if I increase the tension on the wire, I'm actually putting more tension on the back of the cup here, so that will make the sound change slightly. And if they touch the sides of the, the magnet, you can hear the tapping like this. And it's a really fascinating sound. It, to me, sounds a lot like 1960s astronauts or cosmonauts communicating to the ground. Depending on how much tension you've got on there, it can sound like a CB radio. But uh, it's pretty fun, and you might not need this for recording a perfect vocal, but in some cases, this might actually be kind of a cool effect. And it's all done using, I don't know, less than $10 worth of parts for a homemade little microphone. So there you have it. Homemade microphone, the whole thing costs well under 10 bucks. I mean, this costs nothing. This wire is free. The magnets cost a couple of bucks. This was $7 but I've only used a small fraction of what's on here, so this will last me a lifetime. And uh, it's a cool little fun thing. I wouldn't be using this to record my next hit anything, but you know, unless your next hit thing needs a kind of a lo-fi sound. But uh, there you go, job done. No, you're not. Wait, what? You can talk? <gasps> yeah, I can talk. I'm a speaker too. Yeah, I know, but we're not going to get to that until the next episode. You promise? Yeah. Okay. I can't believe I'm talking to a cup. Yeah, you need to get out more, man. I hope you've enjoyed watching this episode. If you've gotten a kick out of it, please click the like and subscribe buttons on YouTube. If you really liked it, please consider going to Patreon and supporting this channel. Even a dollar goes a long way, especially if like 10,000 of you. Honestly, even a dollar goes a long way and I really do appreciate it. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.